I think the title, the original title of my talk was Why is Kivalo still pulling the strings? I cannot say why. Uh, today, what I'll say is, what I'll try to convince you is that he is still pulling the strings. Um, so let me start by, see I changed this to does. Uh, let me start by pointing out that a fair, clean, and independent judiciary was among Euromaidan's top demands, and societal demand uh, for better courts continues to be strong. Uh, what are the um, implications of the dramatic political changes of the last six months for uh, the judiciary? There are um, four plausible um, um, alternatives. The first one is bona fide judicial reform that is aimed at cutting ties, whether they're parasitic or um, symbiotic, between judicial elites and political incumbents, and sort of creating the institutional and uh, cadre foundation for a judiciary that is both politically independent and clean. The second option is simply the replacement of judicial elites that are close to Yanukovych with uh, judicial elites that are going to be now close to Poroshenko and the continuation of the, this symbiotic or parasitic uh, relationship between the two branches. The third option is the conversion of the Yanukovych uh, era judicial elites into Poroshenko supporters. And again, the continuation of the close relationship between the two branches. And the fourth option is a digging in by uh, Yanukovych era judicial elites um, who will aim to transform the judiciary into a political, politically independent uh, institution, but still a uh, corrupt um, institution. They would continue reaping the benefits of corruption rents without having to also cater to politi uh, politicians' preferences. Um, the first development, this sort of bona, uh, bona fide judicial reform, is of course desirable from a rule of law standpoint, while each of the other three um, options would leave uh, one of Euromaidan's um, central demands for independent and clean, and clean courts unfulfilled. Um, obviously, empirically separating the, the, all the options is challenging, especially in the short run. I can talk about this more. Uh, but what I'll argue today is that on balance, and right now, the main events in, in uh, judicial affairs over the past six months point to the last uh, scenario. Let me first talk a bit, uh, hopefully very briefly, about the continued societal uh, demand for judicial reform. Um, Ukrainians are very dissatisfied with the courts. Um, there are two institutions now, one a civil society institution, the Lustration Committee, and the other a state institution, the temporary uh, special commission that is investigating um, judges' misbehavior during Euromaidan, and both of those institutions have received about 4,000 complaints. Um, the data that I'm showing you here comes from the Illustration Committee, the civil society institution, that actually uh, shared some of their, um, shared their data with me. Um, and they solicited uh, complaints against all officials uh, because they were preparing to, uh, to undertake a, a general illustration uh, process in Ukraine. Now, when you look at uh, the distribution of uh, officials that are targeted by the complaints that the illustration committee has received, you see that uh, the overwhelming, um, overwhelmingly, the biggest group of uh, subjects of complaints are judges. Over 40% of the sample um, are complaints against judges. If we add complaints against prosecutors and uh, police officers, investigators, as SBU officers, basically we see that two out of every three complain and, uh, complaints target law enforcement, uh, which I think is sort of uh, is a good indication of, of the strong societal demand for reforms in this area. Um, I will only briefly show you some data that suggests that the distribution of complaints against the courts um, is uh, roughly follows the distribution of judges uh, in these categories. In other words, it's not that uh, um, com uh, complaints are um, more numerous against a certain type of uh, court. Uh, Ukrainians are overwhelmingly uh, dissatisfied with all courts. 
I've done some initial coding of the allegations in the complaints against judges uh, based on the full text of the complaints uh, in the sample that I have. Um, and the analysis suggests that there's more complaints about um, incompetence and corruption than about uh, political bias. Um, I need to do more analysis of this, so uh, that's all I'm going to say for now. Uh, now, what happened um, uh, to the Yanukovych judiciary since Yanukovych fled uh, in February? Well, judicial reform attempts started almost immediately. On uh, February 24th, uh, the new governing majority in the Rada turned its attention to the constitutional court, um, and uh, especially to uh, the, the decision of the constitutional court that they had reached in 2010, which uh, the new uh, Rada majority saw as a um, as having unlawfully turned Ukraine back into a presidential republic. The justices who voted for the for this uh, decision in 2010, uh, the Rada argued, had violated their uh, judicial oath and ought to be dismissed. The Rada recalled the five constitutional justices elected on its quota. Um, and called on both the President and the Council of Justice to um, revoke uh, the justices from their own quotas. Then, in March, um, the Rada majority turned um, to the ordinary judiciary. Um, it passed uh, uh, an extensive um, uh, bill called uh, the Law on Restoring Trust in the Judicial System of Ukraine, uh, since known as the Judicial Lustration Law. Uh, which has two main cornerstones. The first was the automatic dismissal of the judicial leadership cadre. Um, court chairs and deputy chairs, the members of the High Qualification Commission for Judges, and the members of the High Council of Justice. All of these uh, members were summarily dismissed uh, when the law came into effect on April uh, 10th or 11th. Um, and also the second part of that law was the formation of this temporary special commission for review of the courts of general jurisdiction um, that, was, uh, that is currently um, examining the work of, um, of the ordinary judiciary. Okay, I won't go into the future plans because I don't uh, think I, I will have time for it, uh, but um, I will now move on to, to the argument that all of these extensive reforms that were initially undertaken um, have, uh, um, have basically floundered. Uh, judicial, uh, uh, judicial uh, Yanukovych era judicial elites have so far effectively resisted attempts to be purged and have also refused uh, to bow down uh, to the new government and sort of switch sides. Um, at the lowest rung of the judicial hierarchy, district uh, court chairs have effectively ridden out the wave unleashed on them by the judicial illustration law. Um, the, the law that summarily fired all of the uh, court chairs called for elections in the courts uh, to elect new court chairs and new deputy court chairs. Now, the media has widely uh, reported that the majority of court chairs have been reappointed. Um, I am in the process of collecting this uh, data systematically. Uh, the data is now coming in uh, from um, Ukraine's uh, 666 um, um, lower courts. Um, it's slowly coming in, but it confirms uh, the, uh, what the media is reporting. Um, over 80% of the previous uh, court chairs were re-elected to their positions, thus defying the spirit of the judicial illustration law, even though uh, not defying the legality of it. Um, out of the, 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 uh, the small percentage of, cor of court chairs who were not reappointed um, actually did not run for reappointment. Uh, no uh, court chair was actually defeated in an election um, that they had to uh, stand for. And in fact, over 50% of the chairs ran unopposed in the elections uh, that took place. Um, and no judges have left the bench. From all the courts that I've uh, heard from uh, so far, uh, no judges, either uh, court chairs or any other judges, have left the bench since February. Um, continuity also outweighs change 
at the judicial uh, governance institutions. Um, even though the illustration law, uh, the judicial illustration law, envisioned the immediate disbanding of the High Qualification Commission for Judges and banned, in fact, the re-election of anyone who had served on it, um, the, high, um, uh, the High Qualification Commission continues to this day to operate in its Yanukovych era membership. Uh, the reason for that has been sort of legal wrangling. As soon as the law was passed, there were some, uh, some court cases, uh, some lawsuits that uh, were filed uh, to, um, to basically make the implementation of the law uh, more difficult. Since the legal wrangling is still going on, the um, Qualification Commission continues to function in its previous uh, composition. Moreover, the members of the uh, Qualification Commission do not appear to be trying to curry favor with the new political incumbents. Um, they have already started receiving referrals for disciplinary action by the temporary special commission that is examining judicial records. And uh, not only are they dismissing most of the referrals they receive, um, they've um, but so far, they have delivered uh, three punishments against uh, judges for violations of uh, citizens' rights during Euromaidan, but the, uh, the punishment has been a two-month uh, suspension. Uh, so only three judges suspended for two months. That's um, all that they've tried to do to, of course, to the horror of uh, the civil society activists that are trying to collect um, all this data on uh, judicial um, misbehavior during, um, uh, during Euromaidan. And the, the High Judicial Council of Justice also has not been entirely renewed and the Constitutional Court uh, has also managed to resist uh, the attempt to be purged. So uh, right now the Constitutional Court uh, functions with 11 uh, Yanukovych uh, appointees um, to six non-Yanukovych appointees, for only four of whom have been appointed by the current government. Um, so the take home point is the, um, the Yanukovych era judicial elites have dug in and we'll see for how long.